Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here. This is the Astrological Winds channel. And I'm gonna take a look at the Astrological Weather Report for the week of June 6th through 12th. And uh, like last week, there's not a real lot of activity like compared to a normal week. Um, but some really interesting stuff. And you know, and just like when, you know, looking at the events of the past few days and the past week or so uh, in the United States um, with a lot of these mass shootings that are going on, you know, um, it's very interesting. I think what I want to mention is the first of three things this week may have a lot to do with the energy that's behind um, why this stuff is happening now, why people are acting out now. And it actually has to do with three strong asteroid hits that two of them perfecting on Monday um, and as exact hits and one of them on Wednesday as a retrograde second hit. Um, and they all have to do with security issues. Um, and and what I think is having it going on is like there's a lot of like conflict in values is what this is showing. And and that is therefore, you know, between the conflict in values and the security issues going on in the world, it's creating some upsetting reactions and therefore events in the world. So the three, um, the three, um, different um, asteroid hits are on Monday, we have an exact conjunction of Uranus to Pallas Athene, and we have an exact square of Mars to Ceres. And then on Wednesday, we have the second or retrograde hit. So it's a long-term hit that's been running, a transit that's running in the background of things of Saturn sesquadrate series also. And for me, you know, what, you know, series first of all represents a lot of things that are like needs for us, like very basic things like needing like food and energy, for instance, you know, needing a safe like place and, and having a family that we get nurturing from. So all those things, you know, are like really tied into like really deep primal needs of survival, you know, and, and therefore really are tied into security in within us as individuals, you know, and, and therefore also because economy is so important, uh, you know, to us, and that is the way we get security that our self-worth and our self-esteem is all tied up in security and safety also like on, on on psychological levels we're really you know feel you know are tied up on in self-esteem and self-worth level energy is tied into having those resources and and therefore what I think these three together are really showing is that the economic uh, stress for most people right now is so great that for certain people, their um, self-esteem and their self-worth is so damaged inside that they're starting to react against society. And that's why you're having these shootings. That's why you're having like a lot of disagreements because there's a lot of disagreement on how to approach that problem. You know, there's one side that wants to legislate more and really what ultimately does is take away people's like freedom to act a lot of times in the way you know, they would like to individually act. And there's the other side who, you know, is like, hey, you know, let people, you know, have more freedom and figure out new ways to do with do things with that. So that's the Uranus Palace right there. You know, the Uranus Palace is part of like, you know, these like having a strong ideal about, you know, um, 
and revolutionary way of looking at your ideals. And, and it becomes very group oriented too, because Uranus is one of the um, pla outer planets. And even the asteroids, like I've said, you know, they have a lot to do with like shared different values and groups. And with Pallas, it has to do with like the intellectual ideas that we share. So we fight for those values. So like, you know, the Uranus really gives it this strong, rebellious, individualistic, revolutionary streak and we have a conjunction so it's literally it's you know uranus is literally overtaking people's ability to like even reason about it they're just going to at times act out in the upsetting ways and then you add mars squaring series and that's like the end you know brings it right down to the individual level mars being one of the inner planets and the planet of action and also the planet of like the um, anger and and striking out and defending oneself when one feels that's you know they're being like attacked and and so once again you can see like um, what happens many times with Mars too is the you know it identifies like you know law and order and um, and authorities and restrictions is the thing that's stopping it from being able to take the individual acts it needs to take in order to get the security it needs for it and its loved ones. So we have that energy really um, coming up too. And, and, and you know, in, in my opinion too, I'm not a business astrologer. I could be one if I chose to focus my energy on that, but it's not really where my individual interest in astrology is. But I am into mundane astrology, as you guys know. I mention a lot of the stuff that goes on in the world as examples all the time, <clears throat> the astrology that's going on. And one of the things I have to say that I've noticed over the last, you know, I, I've been using the asteroids 20 years. Okay, so for 20 years, Something that I've noticed is when Ceres is getting hard transits, it is tied into the economy too. So like, I, you know, it, it seems to me that I see the markets even react to that. And I don't, I know that's not the real main street economy, but you know, to me, the Saturn Sessic Quadrate series <clears throat> which has been in effect for a few months already and you know this is the exact middle hit where it's like really obvious what's kind of going on with the transit and once again saturn is a societal planet it has to do with the structures of our society series has to do with the goods that we need to live and feel safe and secure. And right now we've seen this, not only a depression of the markets, but the reality is on Main Street, and it's been going on for a while, is supplies are not available, that a lot of the regular goods we have to pay for to live every day based on the reality and civilization and society we've created have to do with like those very basic needs, that is food and energy mainly, and a place to live have all really gone way up in price. And and so we are experiencing restrictions, shortages, supply chain things, that Saturn of our goods, of our of the things we need to survive, that series, and the, and it's a stuck situation. There's nothing anyone can do about it. Sessi Quadre, a uh, situation that needs to develop more before any action that anyone or any government or any organization can take to change the situation. You know, it's just where economy has led us. Um, you know, it really um, <clears throat> is a system, you know, that is linear. And the more there successful it is, the more is needed. And therefore, like inflation is a natural outcome of a successful economy, as is population growth, and therefore resources do get stressed. So this, you know, so we're looking at it on that level of um, 
uh, on the world level. Now, on the, on an individualistic level, <clears throat> what do these three mean too? I mean, what a lot of this may mean is that a lot of us are feeling inside like almost like a harsh discipline is being put on us by like authorities or maybe others in our life. It's like we're getting the things we need, including love maybe being withheld from us is what we're really feeling. So, so you know, and, and it also is showing how inadequate our old systems and models are and that, you know, they no longer ha uh, you know, whether they were ever even really true is a debatable point. But right now it's really being shown that they are not sustainable and working. So like, you know, once again, that's, you know, really causes a lot of inner stress for people on that level of like individually feeling safe and secure and getting what they need. And then the other reality is for some of us with the Saturn series and that Mars series, we may actually have to literally take care of other people right now in the physical world. There may be, you know, people who are injured, ill, elderly, um, uh, just down on their luck, whatever it may be, addicted, victimized, whatever it may be, like there's like this, you know, that may also be like just literally outer events that are like, that you know, that we're stuck with right now. And, and you know, and then when you think about the Uranus palace going back to an individual level too, that will amp people's nervous systems up and then they react to that in erratic ways. They have erratic thoughts and some of those people act out in rebellious behavior out of those erratic thoughts. Now, what would be a good way to use the Uranus Palace is to create new healing forms and the reformation of society and literally like um, having more to do with true human rights and um, like a revolutionary energy. This is really a big call for people to like really take a look at this stuff because it's going, you know, it doesn't seem like there's any way to reel back in, you know, an economy that's not based on any kind of standard of true wealth that's just being like created is going to run away like this when it's successful. So, and get to this point where it gets stuck. So, I mean, it's really a time where you're in this palace. You can also use that energy for reformation of society and, and and technology too technology being used for the benefit of all instead of like surveillance um, trying to enforce your law and order or whatever you're afraid of upon everybody you know things like that so the sun is sextile Chiron on Monday today too at the same time and that shows we do have these opportunities right now to heal ourselves, our life journey, and that we all have like a unique talent that, you know, we can put towards that, you know? So it's a really interesting mix, but it really does explain a lot of these individual acts of violence that are coming out right now. And, you know, and treating the symptoms, you know, like, we can pass gun laws, but that doesn't make people who are already mentally unstable or emotionally unstable, that is all of us, get any better if we're not going to the roots of the problems. And, you know, like looking at, like, like I said, here's economy. Like we have to look at this in a real way, you know, and really, and so Uranus Palace gives us that opportunity to do that. And Sun Sextile Chiron does too. And interestingly enough, the second thing I want to mention this week, on Friday, we have the third hit of Mercury trining Pluto. Now, remember last week I talked about the second hit, that deep inner hit. And this is all about transformation of the mind, all about seeing the models that have been running you po quite possibly subconsciously, unconsciously for a long time. And maybe they're like thoughts that, you know, weren't even your thoughts initially that were implanted into your mind. And now, this whole time period, while Mercury has gone through this retrograde, we've had this Mercury trine Pluto running in the background. And 
that Mercury retrograde brings us within. And I know that people have seen things in themselves in the last month inside about how their behavior, their mind, their subconscious, their inner psyche, their psychology, things they did not see prior to this have had a large effect on the way you function and act in the world. And now we have this opportunity that we've seen this, whatever it may be in your life, whatever that may be, and that we can now start to bring it out, you know, that we can actually, you know, not only, you know, bring this change in, but like we are going to go out and talk about this, have deep conversation, um, and because we have a new depth of understanding of ourselves and others and life. And some of these ideas are bringing us an incredible amount of personal growth and expansion of, of the way we see things or, you know, if you want to call it consciousness, evolutionary reformation. So we're changing our belief systems from within. And now we are ready to bring these out. The important things that we found out. And this is like a really good time too. once again, if you need to get any kind of advice, counseling, therapy, um, healing work, rebirthing, all that kind of stuff, like just all that stuff is it's a really pregnant week, fertile week to really do that. And, and because we really should have some more clarity now of some of the stuff in our mind and, and be able to like now, you know, not allow that stuff to run us uh, subconsciously and unconsciously and, 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 and really get that out. So, and then the last thing I want to mention, this is an interesting one. <clears throat> so next weekend, Venus conjuncts Uranus. Now, remember I said, you know, the, the square had gotten pretty wide earlier this year, but now with Saturn going retrograde and Uranus is going direct for, for a while still, they're going to start getting really tight again. And by the fall, be within one degree of each other. So that's another reason we're seeing the stress levels go up again, because we're starting to tighten up the Uranus Saturn square again, that's been running for a couple, you know, a year and a half now. And that is job is to show us where structure of society and stuff in our lives are weak and need change. And so Venus is conjuncting Uranus this week, which means next week it's going to have to deal with Saturn. But what is Venus Uranus? I would say this weekend, look for a new person, quite possibly, or someone that, you know, you're not with all the time, possibly, to come into your life and really bring some revolutionary, exciting changes and experiences to you. And, you know, so this can be like an exciting new relationship that many times can be short term. Like, it, you know, it may like come and go or it's kind of a little erratic or it's like different. It's alternative. You know, it's not a standard um, modern day traditional patriarchal system type relationship, you know, something different than that. It also can mean like in our regular relationships, new experiences come in that stimulate them and excite them and bring them up to a new level. So, you know, but it's really looking for some kind of new <clears throat> social interaction and response and also can mean a sudden gain and or losses with money. So that's something to factor in if you're someone who's a financial person too. Remember, Venus rules money and Uranus will always can be very erratic and bring very sudden gains and losses. And then also it stimulates us artistically, creatively to seek out new forms of art, stuff that we haven't done or exposed ourselves to before, or maybe the art that we do takes like a radical turn in another direction. So really interesting energy. Now, the thing is, remember next week, it is going to run into Saturn. So like a lot of decisions you make under Venus, <clears throat> Uranus are not 
you know, necessarily the most well thought out when it comes to relationships and money and, and creativity too. So like next week we may find out like the Saturn part will come in and be like, okay, well, this is what this is going to require if this is what you really want to do. So, oh, so yeah. And so that's what I got for the three things this week. Now, next week we do have a moon in Sag, um, full moon in Sag and it's square Neptune. So that's not going to, it's going to really dilute that Sag, but next week is a lot busier week. Now, one other thing, you know, too, since we have a little bit of time still, so the, I, I like mundane astrology and I mentioned Ukraine before, you know, and, you know, people are like, ah, oh, you know, there's stuff going on with Ukraine and, you know, there's a lot behind the story that, you know, we may not, you know, get every day in the press and stuff. And when you look at Ukraine's chart, and I've looked at this before, you know, I had said that, you know, Pluto is really high in the chart, you know, which, you know, and it's in the 10th house. And that shows you why their president is so strong, but his life is always in danger too. But when I look at that chart even more closely, and, and, and remember in, in that chart too, right now, um, there's like three serious transits going on and Uranus is squaring that Pluto in the 10th. So like Uranus is that once again, sudden unexpected events like the war, you know, that's literally what that is. But um, when I look at that chart, it's, you know, it's amazing when I look at some of these countries charts and think, wow, you know, what a terrible time <laughs> to like start a country. And the sad thing about the Ukraine's chart, you know, from 1990, is that the people are taking the brunt of not a really good chart. Um, it, you know, it, it has a lot of first house and eighth house energy that the people are tied up in, and they unfortunately are going to suffer, and they, as they are, you know, um, the chart of that country sets up suffering for people through really like, you know, eighth house is war, destruction, complete transformation, you know, um, international stage, things like that. And the first house is the state of the country itself. And the moon is in the first house. <clears throat> and <clears throat> it's like, that's the people, you know, so it's, it's, and right now Saturn transiting Saturn is conjunct that moon. So you can see that's the restrictions from authorities and their choices and how that's completely destroyed the people and their emotions, their security, their resources and everything. And then they also have net transiting Neptune square Mars, which is also another complete war type transit. Um, so just a really tough, and then Sri Lanka. I don't know if you guys have heard what's been going on in Sri Lanka, but the whole government kind of collapsed, the economy collapsed. They are in an inflation situation that's so runaway and a bad supply situation that's so runaway that in, in the Western world, we should be counting our blessings. They are literally waiting in line to get one liter of gas for two days right now in Sri Lanka. Um, so. I look at their chart and I'm just blown away because the Sri Lanka chart was actually formed by Vedic astrologers when the country formed in the 1940s from Ceylon it went into Sri Lanka. And here's the funny thing, the Vedics don't look at the um, three outer planets. So the moon's in the first house in that chart. And you're thinking, oh, that's cool. The people are in power, right? But they also have a Sun-Saturn conjunction on the midheaven, which I'm sure the Vedics are thinking, oh, this is going to bring a strong, you know, central authority figure who will be like a good father like figure. But like, look what's happened to Sri Lanka. The reason they're in this situation is because all these strong figures, these presidents have come in and changed the economic policy so quickly that it's actually tailspinned out of control now. And they're acting like this big authority pushing that. And then the people, here's the thing. They don't look at the three outer planets. So the moon's in the first house, conjunct Pluto. So the people, once again, are the ones that are getting all, you know, getting the brunt of the suffering. 
the 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 violence the um, transformation the death rebirth model it's all coming down to them and then they're also having some interesting transits too right now transiting neptune is opposite that moon so the people don't know what to even do and if you look at the news stories that's exactly what the people tell you they don't even know what to do right now to survive and so like they have that going on and then also transiting uranus is conjunct their mercury in the ninth house which shows once again the the philosophies and values that are being forced on them in this very rapid way is like creating this complete like jam up like where you you can't change things that quickly and expect the system to be able to just like you know smoothly transfer so i mean they you know really running and then the other one i went to look at was columbia and I, you know columbia has been in a civil war now for almost 60 years and you look at the chart of Columbia and it's like, wow, once again, these charts are like, you sit there and think, you know, if time is elastic and you can go backwards, you'd be like, no, don't do this, you know, like, or you'd be sitting there going, if those in power, new time is elastic and go backwards, you know, do they set charts up like this? I mean, it gets pretty odd and weird at times because when you look at Colombia, here's a country where their chart, there's a Saturn-Pluto conjunction on their ascendant, right? And there's a Neptune-Sun-Uranus conjunction on the MC that are always square one another, nonstop, constant war. And, and right now, transiting Neptune is squaring the Sun-Uranus-Neptune conjunction and is conjunct the Saturn-Pluto ascendant conjunction and they're about to have another election and it's getting really odd down there again, you know? So, I mean, when I look at these countries and I look and I'm just like, I'm, like I said, even in Sri Lanka's case, we even had astrologers choose the chart, supposedly Vedic astrologers. I'm just blown away. I mean, these countries are like, you know, they are getting hit by the transits and they're showing us, you know, how intense, like, that energy can be, you know? And when people are running these old models, you know, how like the whole thing can start to fall apart under a Uranus Saturn square, which is what we're under. So just three real good living examples of the energy of astrology. And um, so I'm Matt Lawton, this is the Astrological Winds Channel. I didn't mention this in the beginning and I'm supposed to according to my advisors. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's a free service. It's on YouTube every week. If you have a YouTube account, become a follower and turn on your notifications and you'll know, you'll be notified when it comes up. But it's a free service. <laughs> and what you can do to pay me back is please pass it on to somebody else um, when we're done here. That would be really cool. Um, if you want to give a donation, I'm more than willing to accept them. I have, you know, folks who definitely do that. And I really appreciate and love all you guys. Thanks so much for all the support. Um, my Venmo handle is at Matthew with two T's hyphen Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. I'm also on Zelle and PayPal. And I am a professional astrologer. I have been doing readings 20 years, amazing readings with amazing people like you. And, you know, it's really good to know what's going on in your life and in your chart. I, you know, I know this, you know, and shameless self-promotion here too, which is, you know, what the age of Aquarius is all about. We all got to find the right place and what our life is about and, you know, find the true meaning of our lives to feel fulfilled, you know? And, you know, I've done that through astrology and I think it can help you even if you're not an astrologer. So if you've never had your natal chart done or you don't understand it, um, I've been doing charts for 20 years and I highly suggest giving yourself a predictive reading as a birthday present every year so that I get, you know, me or another astrologer looks at your transits and your other predictive work for the year coming up. And it tells you the energies you're going to be working with for the year. And therefore you can actually work with those energies instead of blindly and having them work against you in many cases. So contact me for a reading. Um, best way is through email, M-A-T-T, -T, 
H U E eight two three at gmail dot com. That's M A T T H U E eight two three at gmail.com. And I do all kinds of other readings too, elections, if you're starting a business, you have an event, marriage, something like that, you're looking the best timing of that, I really highly suggest doing that. Um, horary questions, if you're really stuck on some yes or no, emotionally charged situation, you just can't seem to get the answer to. A lot of times, you can look at a chart and help you find out what's going on. Specific questions to kids, charts, you know, look at the first, 20 years of a kid's life and the real main things that are going on and relationships of course too that's a big one um met someone new or if your relationship for several years is going through some times you need some help with that I'm available for that um fixed star readings for people who are really looking into deeper soul purpose spiritual kind of stuff so all kinds of stuff like i said individual questions and stuff too is stuff we can look at um so just contact me, M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. And remember, the blog is also on all kinds of podcasts. Um, you know, it goes out through Buzzsprout. It's definitely on Spotify and Apple iPodcasts and Reveal. Um, you can always comment through those or on YouTube, and I'll see the comments. Um, also, Instagram. If you have an Instagram account, look up Astrological Winds channel and become a follower because I actually post stuff on there more than once a week and it's just not video or audio, it's just a little two or three sentences about what's going on that day. Um, that, you know, is a little bit more detailed than what I do in the weekly. So look that up. And I also post it on my Facebook, although my Facebook is private. So um, you have to friend me, ask for a friend request first, Matthew, two T's, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. And remember, I only use my Facebook for astrology, guys. So um, it's not a social media thing for me. Um, so don't get onto the Facebook thing and not expect to be. And I do social media, some of you guys. Um, I try to remember who tells me not to. Sometimes I slip up. And I definitely don't get to all of you every week. You need to be a little responsible too. Um, I have more and more followers and I just can't keep up with all you guys. I'm reminding you all every week, so a little self-responsibility there if you like the vlog. Um, all right, well, I hope that was helpful. Next week is going to be a much busier week than these last two weeks are. The pace of life's gonna pick up. Mercury's gonna get out of its shadow, back into Gemini full moon and Sag, although, like I said, in a tough square with Neptune. So we'll take a look at that. All right, Matt Lawton, Astrological Winds Channel. Please pass it on. Thank you so much. See you next week.